In this lecture, I will explain you the detection of PWM. In the previous lecture, we have done the the detection of uh, sorry the generation of PWM. In this, we are going to do the detection of PWM. Okay. So now you can see that there are some blocks. The first one is pulse generator, ramp and pedestal generator, clipper, low pass filter, and reference pulse generator. Okay. So what happens is, first of all, this pulse generator, what, what is the function of this pulse generator? What does it do? This basically regenerates, regenerates PWM signal. Okay. So it will make the PWM signal, the pulse width modulating signal. And it removes noise also. Okay. If there is some noise, it removes noise. Okay. And now this PWM signal has gone to ramp and pedestal generator. Okay. So what does this ramp and pedestal generator will do? It, it basically produces train of constant width, constant width pulses. No, it will not. So this pulse generator has two functions. First of all, it removes noise. Second, PWM, gener uh, PWM signal it will generate. And third is because it's a pulse generator, so it will produce train of constant width pulses. Okay. So it will generate the constant width pulses. Now, this will go to the ramp generator, this ramp generator. Okay. And the ramp for duration equals to pulses of PWM. Okay. And then after that, it, it goes to the, it goes to the reference pulse generator and then all these goes to the addition, then clipper and then low pass filter. Okay. So this is very simple. So I have mentioned it here. Look here. This one, the first one removes noise regenerates pwm signal okay pwm signal it is generating then it is applied to ramp generator see it is applied to ramp generator and then so this one the reference pulse generator this one reference pulse generator it will generate the pulses produce strain of constant width pulses okay and width of pulse if width of pulse is increasing, then height of ramp is also increases. Okay. So you need to remember it is just if width of pulse increase, then height of ramp equals to increase. Okay. And in this one, remember slope ramp for duration equals to pulse of PWM. Okay. Now, all this goes to addition. See, I've mentioned here this sign. This is the addition sign. So, this will generate pulse. This removes noise, regenerates PWM signal. All this apply to ramp and pedestal generator and then it goes to edit, addition. Okay. And then after that, it goes to clipping. See, clipper. It The clipper, it will clip off. And then after that, we will get the PAM signal, okay, pulse amplitude modulation. Then it passed through the LPF, low pass filter, and then we will get the original modulating signal. Okay, so you need to remember steps. So pulse generator, then reference pulse generator, it passed through the ramp and pedestal generator, then edit, additional, then clipper, and then low pass filter, okay. This all I have explained it here. Addition, clipping, PAM, and then LPF, and then original modulating signal. Okay. Now, if we make the waveform of pulse amplitude, uh, pulse width modulation. Okay. So, how to make the? So, this is the first is received. PWM. So this is the first signal which is our received PWM. Okay. Whatever we have received. Just do it with this. 
okay this one is receive P pwm you can see there are some ripples here okay so this we need to take it out and then uh, this one the reference pulse generator this reference pulse generator will regenerate pulses okay so next one is regenerated pulses regenerated pulses means it will remove all the ripples so it is regenerated pulses and it will remove all the ripples okay so you can see that now no ripples are there there is no ripples okay next is this one is very important output of ramp generator i will explain you now output of ramp generator okay output of what is this doing now this is some different function i don't know okay this is the output of ram generator and let us see the green color okay now it is very important output you need to know you need to understand how i made this output look the second one the second so the first one and the second one make the dotted line and the ramp this is the ramp here okay this is the ramp which is generating and when it is off the ramp is off here okay then again this is the line this is the line the ramp is generating towards this duration and when it is off this is off here okay and again the ramp is generating when this is off this is off here okay i hope you understood it how to make this okay so this is how to create the ramp now next is output of reference pulse generator so what is the output of reference pulse generator now okay so let us see this one okay this is the output of reference pulse generator so you can see i have just made the pulses pulses on these ones on this this edges i have made the pulses okay and now the this is the output of adder what adder will do output of adder now what adder is going to do it it will create it will uh, add the ramp and the pulses so you can see that see this is here this is here right on this off one on this off one i add this pulse like this okay i hope you understood like what what i did so on this off i add pulses so you can just check where i add the pulses this is the output of adder and then final the output of clipper so this is the output of clipper what it will do it will just remove the ramp and creates the output now i can say it is pam because amplitude is varying okay that means it it is basically the pam signal because amplitude is varying and then it is passed through lpf and we get the original pwm signal okay so this is pam and then we will get the pwm signal so this is basically the detection of pwm so pwm signal what does that mean pwm signal is pulse width modulation that means width is varying 
so width is varying right you can see but here in this case amplitude is also varying so we will pass through the lpf so what does lpf do low pass filter it just uh, stops certain frequency and passes certain frequencies okay so we'll get the pwm signal now next is advantages of pwm so i have written already when you talk about the advantages then talk about the noise interference the noise interference is less due to amplitude has been made constant second signal can be separated very easily at demodulation and noise can also be separated easily that means whatever signal we are receiving the noise can be separated and signal can be separated with the noise so whatever signal we are getting at the receiver will be a good signal without the noise synchronization between transmitter and receiver is not required unlike pulse position modulation disadvantages of pwm power will be variable because of varying in width of pulse and bandwidth is large as compared to bandwidth of pa okay applications of pwm what are the applications you can use in te telecommunication systems used to control the amount of power used in robotics embedded applications and analog and digital applications so in exams definitely the waveforms are going to come because waveforms are very very important you need to do the waveforms very carefully of this and the block diagram can come the detection of pwm okay